This is Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Let's get into it. Mark Wayne Mullen, welcome back to the show. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay, but I'm not seeing you. I, I'm- oh, well, perhaps that's because I had a little surprise for you. Yes. <laughs> you're... You're, you're gonna you're upping me one. Is that what you're saying? Look at this. You always get on to me for being so casual. Here I am. I've got the bow tie. I got the tuxedo. I got the cufflinks. I got everything. But but but, if you, you remember the last, uh, <laughs> no, of course not. Why would I have <laughs> pants on? Of course not. But but I don't know if you remember. This would have been all the way back in December. But I also mentioned there was going to be one other thing that I was going to wear during our next chat. Do you remember what that was? I don't. Well, I'm a man of my word, and I said I'd be wearing a top hat. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh. So, Senator Mullen, I hope you are ready for literally the most dapper interview that you've ever done in your entire life. You look like a clown. You don't even have a coat on. Look at me. Man, I'm about ready to go get my coat or something. I mean, nope, nope. It's, too like, it's too it late. It looks like it needs to be like a New Year's Eve uh, event we're hosting here. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I've got my cane over there. I've got everywhere I go now, people just throw glitter. Like it's just like, and fireworks are going off. It is fantastic. So I know uh, that's right. (laughs) I got to say, I got to say, Mark Wayne, I know this is going to be very distracting for you, but we got some business that we need to tend to here. So are you ready to get down to business? (laughs) Well, you need to be doing like an introduction, like a fight introduction. Are you ready to rumble type thing? Well, you know, I had two vocal cord surgeries last year. This is about as loud as I get. And I, if I'm going to do a full on Bruce buffer, I think I need at least six more months of recovery. So yeah, you're well, just going to have to do your best. Yeah. You're just going to have to do your best without your big time intro, buddy. All right. So to get to a specific subject, that First is a all, big did concern. You rent that? Did I rent? No, I own this. This is all me, baby. You I rent every on the top hat. Oh, I've, I've had this top hat for like 15 years. We bought a house a long yeah. time ago. The guy that owned the house before us was like a theater director. A bunch of stuff was left in the house, including a top hat that just so happens to fit my ginger noggin okay. perfectly. Well, just as long as you didn't buy it, because if you bought it, I was going to give you all kinds of crap. Hey, even if so, why don't we wear top hats anymore? We're such a casual culture. We don't even, we barely wear pants to get on an airplane now. I think I'm going to start bringing sexy back a little bit, okay? I'm going to start getting people like, this is how we're going to make it happen. The, now, I will say the top hat is much better than people getting on a plane with pajama pants on. Uh, See? Yes, yeah, so I'll give you on that one. Yeah. Pajama pants are not pants. Yoga pants are not pants. And I'm not wearing either right now because I'm not even wearing pants. Well, See? No, 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 I disagree. I think my wife looks good in yoga pants, and they're definitely pants. Uh, I'm going to make no comment on that because she is your lovely bride, but I'm just going to say if I could trace all of your different dimples and lines in your body based on the pants you're wearing, and I don't have to even think about it, perhaps you're not wearing pants, perhaps you're wearing long underwear. I would, I would say that there's probably some people that shouldn't wear it. Yeah. I'll yeah. You- Before you get yourself in any trouble and talk about biting anybody or something like that, we should probably get off the subject before we both get in trouble. So let's get in trouble thinking yeah. about a different subject. So okay. we are going to shift gears into something serious. Right, let's shift. Yeah. We got to talk about the southern border because it has been the thing that no one's really been talking about, you know, except for conservatives and, and things like that. And now it's everybody. Because yeah. you've got Governor Abbott and Governor DeSantis shipping migrants to all these supposed sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. They're all freaking out now. Everybody's mad at the Biden administration. And then a couple of weeks ago, Fox News ran a story and it said schumer Langford border deal, right? And so that's Senator Schumer of the Democrats and Senator, Senator Langford of the Republicans. He's your uh, compatriot here for the state of Oklahoma, representing the state of Oklahoma. And the thing was, is they were just kind of running it as a potential deal. You know, it's a bipartisan deal, but they were like the bipartisan sellout of America. And there was one line that caught a lot of people weird and it said immediate work permits to every illegal alien released from custody. So I text this to you and I'm like, hey, is this legit? And then you and I talked about it a little bit. So talk about the border just in general, but then specifically talk about any deal that the Senate might pass because the House already indicated that, you know, something like this would never pass the House. But take that wherever you want to go with it. Well, let, let's break down the border bill. A lot of people have come up and have already drawn a conclusion by it, and the text hasn't been released. I haven't read the text. The text the text isn't even all put together as, as of yet. I mean, I literally was talking to Lankford maybe uh, maybe an hour and a half ago. 
And he says, it's not finalized. We don't have the text yet. So there's a lot of speculation of what's in the bill, but no one knows what's in the bill because you haven't seen it. There's some top lines in there that people grab hold of. They grab hold of uh, uh, 5,000 people a day uh, cut off. Mm-hmm. You know, they grabbed the, the the work permits cut off. They talked about parole and they're not understanding what parole was. Uh, they talked about building more uh, re- uh, more um, uh, uh, beds for holding areas. And people are like, whoa, hold on a second. What the heck is going on here? And what I want to what I want to, to put out there is, first of all, any bill that we were to do does not prevent President Trump when he gets in office doing anything he wants to do through executive orders or passing a different bill. So start with the fact that right now, I'm just going to say if if you're speculating on the very, very worst situation that this bill does nothing but the top lines that you just heard about, does nothing else, Hmm. just those top lines. Right now, we have over 10,000 people per day crossing the border, and that number continues to climb. Mm-hmm. So let's say worst case, say that the 5,000 is actually the number, which it's not, but just say that 5,000 is a number and say that it's going to only allow 5,000 people a day. Well, underneath this administration that wants an open border, we're literally cutting the flow by half. That's, 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 that's not great, but it's better. And people that say, well, just shut the border down. If we could shut the border down, we would. But we only control the House. We don't control the Senate, meaning Republicans. And we don't control the White House. And the White House is the one that's making the calls on this, not us. So we don't have that option. That option isn't there. Um, They say, well, shut down the government. Even if you shut down the government, the border doesn't close. Because who prioritizes spending once Congress shuts shuts down the government is the President of the United States. For example... When 2013, when we shut down the government, when Obama was in office, um, Obama shut every national park, started saying there was going to be no checks going out. Veterans weren't going to be able to get their pay. Uh, The VA hospitals were going to be running on emergency status. Uh, Men and women deployed weren't going to be able to get paid. They were going to be stationed in place and not be able to travel and just basically shut the whole place down. Trump was in office when Pelosi shut it down, or when Schumer, not when I was Pelosi, when Schumer shut it down. And we were shut down for 90 days. And no one remembers any of it because he did a different approach. He prioritized everybody as being essential because when you go to shutdown, essential employees are essential, non essential goes home. Oh, Trump said, if you're non-essential and you can go home, then you're fired. If you're not essential, then why are you working for the government? So hmm. different approach. So the, my point is in saying that is shutting down the government isn't going to stop the border either because they're just going to deem it essential and, and continue to work the way they are. And cartels don't care if you're shut down or not. They're still going to cross the border. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole they're point. Not, they're not crossing at border. They're not crossing at, at border crossings. They're crossing in non-border areas. So it doesn't doesn't happen. So people that make that argument isn't there. Now let's talk about the work permit. Work permit, as I said, Kyle, this was actually my idea to put the work permit in there. Because right now we have 8.8 million individuals that are here that came into the country illegally, but now they are here legally. You say, how are they here illegally? They're illegal immigrants. No, They were illegal when they entered, but because they got paroled and what parole means is they get a court date because they claimed asylum, because that's what the cartels tell all these individuals to do, claim asylum, and they get paroled immediately. 85% get paroled immediately, meaning they don't go go into any holding areas, they don't do any background checks, and 85% are paroled immediately. 6% are the only ones that are actually checked thoroughly and the other percentage are just simply asked questions. So the other, uh, what would it be, the other 7%? No, let me see, 6 Where's my math on this one? Uh, my, the, other, uh, the other 9% would be, would be just be, would just ask general questions, and then they're paroled. They're paroled for six to eight years with a piece of paper that says return on this date to be heard on your asylum case. In other words, they're here legally inside the United States, but they can't work. So how do they make a living? Off your and I's taxes, because we're supporting them. 
uh, where they're eligible for benefits. They're actually eligible for even some Social Security benefits, not Social Security, but Social Security benefits. They're, op- they're, op- they're, they're eligible for every one of our, of our welfare programs. So my thought is, is if they're here illegally and uh, they're not going to be sent back, they came here illegally, but they're here legally now, make them work. Every hospitality area you go past, regardless if it's a hotel or a restaurant, is hiring. Every labor company out there, be it plumbing, HVAC, electrical, like our companies, or a construction job, every framer, every bricklayer, everyone that has labor, every lawn service company, every gardener, they're all hiring. So if we're going to be here, at least instead of being a leech on our economy, let them be contributors to our economy and pay taxes and pay into those programs. And so that was that was that makes a lot more sense than just sitting there doing nothing. Because as I said, I don't I don't, I don't like the process the Bidens use. I don't think they should be here. Period. But that's not the option we're faced because they've already been paroled. So now they are here. So let's put them to work. Now, so it's not great options, but it's the best option. Let's talk about what, uh, let's talk about the, 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 the retention beds, what we call the retention beds, adding the beds mm-hmm. to it. Okay, so the way that the bill is being proposed is the 5,000 isn't 5,000 that's gonna be let into the country. There are 5,000 that can be processed. The minute we hit 5,000, it's cut off. But only 5,000 a day can, hand, can cross the border. Once it hits 5,000, it immediately shuts down and it will not be open until the flow decreases, which could be two weeks, it could be two months, it could be until the beds, the retention beds, go down to where we can process them. Because 100% will have to go through a hearing rather than automatically be paroled. And what the hearing is, is instead of saying that you get to claim asylum and immediately get granted it, you actually have to prove that you need asylum, that there's a credible threat and that there wasn't a place, safe place for you to go in the country you came from or any of the countries you crossed before getting to the United States. So that means that the 5,000 a day could be cut down to a few hundred or 1,500. But once they hit 5,000 is when the border, that's the matrix to where the border automatically, it, can, they, it says it shall, not it may, it shall be shut down, meaning that they, 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 the government has to shut it down, meaning that Biden doesn't have a choice. He can't go around it. It's immediate. The beds are allowing us to have the process to be able to hold them and process them because the Democrats have been saying, well, we can't. We got to release them because there's not a, enough beds for them. So on top of that, that's another trigger, too. We've 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 conceded to them because it's Congress is a give and take. There is no perfect bill. The perfect that the person that wants a perfect bill remind you the Constitution has been amended. Um, it, there isn't been a perfect bill, so you have to do this give and take. They said we want more beds. If you want, to, if you if you're going to make us, if you're going to make us uh, um, have a hearing right then on everybody that wants to come into the country and claim asylum, then we need more space to hold them. I said okay, we'll give you more space, but the minute the beds are full too. The border is shut down until they get processed below a certain percentage to where you can have more people in the processing center and go to, and have more beds available. So there's two triggers that will shut down the will shut down the border because right now they never shut it down. So is this bill perfect? Lord, no. Is it the bill that we want? I wouldn't say it's a bill that we would draw if Trump was in office and we had control of the Senate and the House. Absolutely not. But considering that we only control the House and we have to negotiate with Chuck Schumer and and Trump or not Trump, but Biden, it's 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 better than what we have currently, because doing nothing, Kyle, isn't an option. Okay, so what what are the odds that a deal gets done? through the Senate and the House and is signed by Biden before the election? Like if you had to give it odds. I think um, two weeks ago, before Fox ran their story, which I think was absolutely irresponsible on them because once again, they read a story, put their spin on it, and they didn't have any facts behind it because the Mm -hmm. bill to this day, I gave you the, all I was giving you was the top lines of the stuff that they had accused us of. 
I, 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 they don't even know what's in the bill totally yet. But since they did that, it made a lot of people, a lot of career politicians, what I would say, people that are more, more concerned about keeping their office than actually doing their job by doing the research, understanding what's in it before they go out and talk something about it. There's already a lot of people that's dug their heels in the ground and said, I'm not voting for it. So I, now we face the political game. The political game now has changed since there's so many people in the House that's already said they won't do it. Now what's going on up here is Biden is wanting to get the bill done because, mind you, the Democrats, they really don't want to do anything at the border. If they were serious right. about doing something at the border, when Biden's first two years was in office, he controlled the House and the Senate. He had Pelosi and Schumer both in office, both leading the chambers. So they could have both... And they could have they could have came together, got the border deal they wanted because they had a president that was in what was in office, but they did they did nothing. So they understand they really don't want to do anything. So this is played perfect because you have people that's jumped out there and said they're not supporting the bill before they even read it. So now what's going to happen is Biden's wanting to get this thing passed as soon as he can. Dare the Dem the Republicans not to do something on it. So he can say, see, the Democrats are trying to fix this problem, but we can't because MAGA extremists won't yeah. let us do it. And that's that's the politics that we're facing now. So policy doesn't matter. It's the politics that's taken over. And uh, and it's a shame because what's going to end up happening could be end up happening is we do nothing on the border. And for the next 12 months, we continue to have record numbers crossing. We have fentanyl that's flooding our, 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 our country and the drug cartels are making millions per day on a tune so of $2 million per day. Right. So what's, what's the more likely thing that we're going to see this year? A deal gets done or no deal, no deal gets done. What's more likely? I think it's even odds at this point. I, if you ask me next week, I'll have a better feeling of it because I, okay. people may change when you people may change when when they read the text. But the the person that holds the strings to this more than anything is if President Trump, um, who I'll be with Friday night speaking at, at the at the Arizona rally that he's that he's hosted, if he's if he were to come out and speak negative of the bill, it's dead. If he were to speak positive of the bill, it's alive and well. If he okay. says nothing, you have a 50-50 chance. Okay, so pick them with, uh, with our future well, and again, with the- that's uh, politics for you. Yeah, that's certainly politics for you. Now, I do wanna talk a little bit about the election and Trump, but, but before we get off that, I do wanna ask you briefly, I know there's a difference between being a lawmaker and being an ideological purist because it's really easy to be a, an ideological purist on Twitter, right? Because you don't have to actually get anything done. You don't have to negotiate. You can just say, I'm pure because I believe X, Y, and Z. But to someone, and I've said this before, that would say, what if we as America said, okay, no more asylum cases will be heard until the backlog is done. So it's like, look, we are shut down entirely. So I don't care if you came from Mexico or Guatemala or Brazil or wherever you came from, but we are not taking any more asylum cases whatsoever. Because in that moment, I feel like these people that are just streaming across the border because they know they're going to be granted, well, they're not even going to go to their court date. Let's be honest. They're just going to assimilate into whatever oh, part of over, their city they over want. Over 90% don't show up for the court date. Yeah, of course. Like that, because if you give them work permits, we'd also be able to keep track of these individuals. Because while they're working, it's like their social security number. So we know where they're at, where they're living and where they're moving towards. So we would know where these individuals are at all times, too. So it's a tracking right. mechanism, too. So would that would that be something just right there to where it's like, OK, yes, we are a country that uh, takes asylum seriously. And if we can help protect you from like actual harm, but we literally cannot accept even one more asylum case because we have a backlog of millions. Uh, Kyle, once again. You would get no argument out of 99.9% .9 of the Republicans. They're not going to do it. The, the, the Biden administration, no way they're going to do it. I don't know if Trump, if he was in office, if he could do that um, for and sustain it for a long period of time. I think he could do it for a short period of time, but um, I don't know if he could do it for a long period of time, but there's no chance that the, that the Biden administration would do it. There's not a... There's not a law we could pass that he would sign 
that he would do that because he has the authority to do that right now. So even okay. if we pass legislation, he would have to sign it. And then if he vetoed it, we don't have two thirds to override it. That's even if Schumer would bring it to the floor on the Senate. I don't believe Schumer would ever bring it to the floor. And on another side about security too, uh, people talk about HR2, as you want to say purist, people talk about HR2. Mm -hmm. HR2 is the perfect bill in my case, when we, we under, it's perfect as possible, perfect as possible. There's no perfect bill, perfect as possible bill for border security that the house has passed out of the house. I would love to see that put in, put in office or put into law. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. Schumer will not bring that to the, to the Senate floor. And even if he did bring it to the floor, there's no way that he would be, we'd be able to put 60 votes on it. And for some unforeseen reason, we were able to get 60 votes on it. Um, Biden would never sign it. Never would he sign it. There's no way. He's already said Schumer and Biden both said HR2 are both dead on arrival. So you, you get back to this theory here that as a purist, I think I, I think I am considered a purist, really. I'm very, very conservative, but I'm also practical. I have done I, I've done nothing but negotiate deals since I was 20 years old. And I try to and, and, and people say, well, why can't Congress? Why can't the government work more like a business? Well, I would agree with that, except when you start working like the business, people get mad at you because in a business, it's all about negotiating. Is it not? Mm, sure. I, I'm negotiating constantly. I'm negotiating with my insurance. I'm negotiating with my with my with my suppliers. I'm negotiating on wages and on what I'm paying people. I'm negotiating on business deals. I'm negotiating on leases. I'm negotiating on purchases. I'm negotiating on toothpaste, man. I'm I'm negotiating on everything. And when I negotiate, I want 100 110% of what I want. But I know I'm going to negotiate down to 70%, but I'll walk away at 69%. Because I I I I still got to have whatever product or whatever job I need it. So I'm going to go negotiate down to some place until I'm not uncomfortable and I'm going to walk. Negotiating the bill in the House or in the Senate is the same way. you got to negotiate. And people say if you're negotiating, you're a sellout, you're a rhino, you know, you're compromising. There's no win. Um, there's always going to be give and take. And we have to we have to understand that we got to breathe and understand that. And what I always tell people is say, did you read the bill? If you read the bill, tell me what you like about it and tell me what you don't like about it and then weigh it and see if there's more good than there is bad. If there's more bad, then yeah, vote no. If there's more good at whatever percentage that is for you, then you should try to support it. Well, and that's the, the built-in gridlock that the founders wanted from the very beginning. That's why we You're are a constitutional actually. republic and not a democracy. I can't stand it when people just you know blatantly say, oh, we're a democracy. It's like, no, at nope. no point in any of our founding documents, we are a constitutional republic. And this is part of the design here. Uh, yes. Before we get you out of here, we obviously need to talk about your buddy Trump. You were one of the very first people that came out publicly and endorsed him for president. This was very, very early on. But he since won the Iowa caucuses uh, yesterday. This will be coming out on Thursday. But on Tuesday, he wins the New Hampshire primary. He's leading by a lot in South Carolina, which is where Nikki Haley, the only person left in the Republican field other than Trump, that's where she's you know, kind of hedging her bets because she's a former governor of that state. Trump's got to feel pretty good at this point because it would literally take an unprecedented comeback by Nikki Haley to overtake him at this point. I, would, I don't even want to ask you, is that likely? Because that may be like me asking you, is the sun going to fall out of the sky tomorrow? Is that likely? It doesn't really seem like it's likely. But I know you talk to him. You're, you're kind of part of that inner circle. You kind of know what's going on. What is the Trump campaign thinking right now about where they're at? Are they about to shift gears from not paying attention to Haley and paying attention just to Biden? Where are they at right now with the campaign? Well, first of all, it'd be more likely the sun would fall out of the sky than Trump were to lose to Nikki Haley. Uh, it seems that way. There's still one person, God, that can make that decision. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of people who's got to change their mind to go support Nikki Haley over Trump. Uh, right. So I'm not, Lord, I'm not trying to be funny there. Yeah, I guess don't, I'm, don't, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Uh, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm being realistic. There is no path for Nikki to get there. Uh, what Nikki has is Nikki still has money to spend. And yesterday people were like, well, Nikki did better than what she was supposed to. I mean, Trump did 40, 55. She did 43. Some folks have a 44, but let's say 43 and a half. And you, when you really break down those numbers, though, 
there was a lot of Democrats that voted for Nikki Haley and he, Trump won the, the, the Republican vote by over 73 percent. Um, right. He's leading in, in, in North Carolina by 40 percent. I mean, huge gap. Uh, there's a reason why that um, the governor, current governor of the state and the senators of that state did not endorse Nikki Haley. That says right. something about who she is. I mean, and I've never met Nikki on a personal level, so I can't make that judgment. I'm just saying that if no one in your state that's 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 elected statewide is supporting you, that's a that's a problem. OK, that, that's well, and, a, because your state should be your home base. Well, I said before she even announced that she was running that I was really excited to see her in the race and she see what she was about. But to be honest, the more I see and hear from Nikki Haley, the less I like her. It's just like she's basically. You know, she's playing the the sexism card. She's borrowing a lot of stuff from the left. She's being overwhelmingly supported by Democrats in this race, which is what we saw in the open primary in New Hampshire. So I guess my concern is, is it seemed like from the beginning that Trump, this is what Trump, you know, or this is what the Democrats wanted. This is what the leftists wanted. They wanted Trump. They thought of all the people, DeSantis, Haley, you know, even Vivek Ramaswamy, even though I don't feel like you can trust anything that man says with all these people. They thought those people have a better chance of beating Joe Biden than Donald Trump does. And so that's the calculation that they've made. Now, they made the same calculation in 2016 by giving him all this free pe free press, thinking that Hillary was the heir apparent. And then we saw what, what happened there. But is there any concern there in his camp that it's like a lot if he gets convicted on in one of these four cases that are pending, which he's clearly going to be convicted because it doesn't matter because of where they're taking place, right. you know, in Washington, D.C. and in New York. Like, obviously, he's not going to get a fair trial in either one of those jurisdictions, perhaps in Florida. But in these cases, there's a lot of people that are supporting Trump right now. But they say if he is convicted of a crime by a jury of his peers, that they will not support him. I think the Democrats know that. And I think that even though Joe Biden is barely sentient at this point, it's not going to matter because they're going to look at Joe Biden as generic Democrat, as opposed to an actual person that has to stay alive. You know, um, I, I have, a, I have a, a theory behind this. First of all, um, Trump's leading in all the polls uh, with with Biden head to head. I mean, right. MSNBC, you can look at all the liberal polls you want to. Everybody has Trump beating Biden at this point head to head. Every time he gets charged or gets called to court, his numbers just increase. So right. the people that say if he gets convicted by his peers, actually, that's not accurate because he's never going to be convicted by his peers. He's going to be convicted in Washington, D.C. that went by activists, 84% for Trump uh, or yeah. for, for uh, not Trump, for Biden, for Biden you, you, and, and 96% for Hillary Clinton. You're going to have uh, you're going to have New York, which went overwhelmingly for Biden by the tune of over 70%. And 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 uh, the numbers, he had higher write-ins for against him than he had, than he actually won percentages for Trump on that, on, in, in New York, in New York City, where he's being charged, not upper state New York. So he he can't, he's not going to be judged by his peers. And people see that and they got it wrote off now. So that doesn't change the fact. What I think will actually happen is um, is the Democrats are fearful of Trump now. They want it. The reason why they're supporting Nikki Haley is because they want anybody but Trump because they know they can't beat him. It, everybody knows his ne his negatives. They have thrown everything they could literally throw at the guy, and his numbers just increase. So there, I believe, Kyle, this is just me, and I'm going to sound like a crazy conspiracist here, which I am not. I'm just more of a practical guy looking at the Democrats and looking at politics because I'm li that's my world I live in now. So I'm, I mm -hmm. think, political more than what I probably should. But if I'm the Democrats and their fear and their hatred towards Trump, am I really going to leave a guy in there that can't beat him, that they really don't like because his numbers now are are – consistently below 40%. So where's my option to change him? They didn't want him to be in a primary. So they did it on purpose. So they, they, they ran, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, not RFK junior out. Hmm. Uh, they tried to clear the field to get people out of the race. Uh, the people that were trying to qualify against him, they made sure they couldn't qualify in the States they were at because they didn't want him to run a primary because they knew his numbers would only go down because the more he talks, the more his numbers go down versus Trump, the more he talks, the more his numbers go up. 
So at the convention, at the, at the, at the national convention, the Democrat national convention, I wouldn't be surprised at all that at that convention, Biden comes up, he has a deal worked out with whoever his heir apparent is going to be. I'm not saying it's Michelle Obama, but that's what the news says. Okay. I don't know who it's going to be. Hakeem Jeffries, who knows who it's going to be. Um, that he has a deal worked out that, listen, if they convict my son, you got a, you, you, you got a pardon. And if they come after me, you got to pardon me too. Mm-hmm. And if you promise me, give me your word on that one, then I'll go, the, I'll go to the convention and I'll say, hey, my health isn't going to allow me to continue to, to, to move forward. And he releases his delegates. And the delegates at that point start jockeying and they can pick somebody else at the convention to run against Trump. And that's what I think more than likely will happen. Well, I would like to say that that sounds too conspiratorial to be true, but I think 2020 has uh, uh, disabused me. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, certainly anything can happen. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, that if that is the thing and the dubious plan is to bring Michelle Obama in, I mean, at that point, she's... But, but I mean, she's the most popular woman in America. So. I, I'm just saying that's what the news is saying right now. Um, well, that's what they, they're not going to bring out Pete Buttigieg or Kamala Harris. Like they're not going to put one of those people in because it's just like, you know, I would rather vote for a do. left foot. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But hey, uh, we I'm looking at the clock and we are out of time. And so I guess my last question for you is, is how much longer are you going to be dressing like a homeless person? Because over here where I'm from in these great states of the United States and in this great state of Oklahoma, we dress like we got somewhere to be and people to impress. How long are you going to keep looking like you do? Brother, I'm here just to be a supporting staff role for you and your, your endeavors to, uh, to, I don't know, I guess start acting Abraham Lincoln-ish. <laughs> so. Well, he didn't have a red beard, but he probably should have. You dye that beard, man. You'll look good. <laughs> All right, I will start working on my Gettysburg address, but Mark Wayne Mullen, I would like to bid you adieu, good sir. (laughs) See you, brother. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Wherever you're listening to this, please subscribe, rate, and leave us a positive five-star review. If you want me to come speak live at your event or on your podcast, just shoot me an email to info at undaunted.life. That's I-N-F-O at undaunted.life. Follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook and check out our website for everything else, including how to donate to keep more content like this coming your way. Just go to www.undaunted.life. And also, we want to thank the band Holy Name for allowing us to use their music for our content. The music on this podcast is their song, Perpetua, which is off their self-titled debut album on Face Down Records. The links are in the description. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Remember, keep pushing back darkness, keep forging spiritual, mental, and physical resilience, keep seeking the Lion of Judah.